I watched a YouTube video from YouTuber Boogie2988 earlier today, and he was talking about the high price of YouTube fame and kind of the, the hate and uh, disgusting comments that go along with uh, putting yourself out there in public and having anonymous people respond. And I've had my own experiences with that, um, less so on YouTube and more in blog comments where at one point I even received death threats for something I said, which was totally overreacting to the to the to what I had said. But that just comes with the territory on the internet. But the thing that struck me as more important about what Boogie2988 had to say was that he was concerned, and I think this is a, a feeling among other YouTubers in general, that he couldn't take time off from creating on YouTube because if he did, he would stop being relevant when during the, the time that he was gone and possibly couldn't recapture that when he came back. And I think there is a lesson there, not so much that you can't actually take the time off, but you need to figure out how to reposition what you're doing online so that you can take that time off. So instead of worrying about being relevant, you need to worry more about how you are creating lasting value for other people so that if you decide to take time off, they will still want to hear from you when you come back and they won't forget about you. And I think one of the ways to do that is to create mechanisms that are not 100% tied to YouTube. So while you're popular on YouTube right now, if you happen to be, use that to help push people to something that you have a little more lasting control over. Because if YouTube decides to change the rules, it might not matter whether you're relevant or not. You might cease to exist on YouTube just because they decided it was so. And so if you, you do things like uh, create your own blog or you create an email list so you can stay in communication with people who are willing to uh, have email communications with you or whatever other channels that you might choose to have and I mean Twitter, Facebook, any of the places that people tend to uh, engage with others. I like email personally still because even though everybody has said it's dead for a long time, still a great way to communicate with people. And I think in some ways it, it has a more personal touch if somebody has actually given you permission to uh, send them an email than many other things. And so for me, if I have uh, various uh, facilities where I am currently popular, I, I try to get people ultimately to come back to my email list and then I can email them and stay in touch with them. And then if you go on a two week vacation or whatever, you can even uh, figure out some kind of a uh, way that you can continue to uh, pre-prepare some, some emails and maybe you could even pre-prepare some videos uh, for your YouTube channel so that you could take some time off because at the end of the day, relevance is fleeting. And unless you have a team of writers like Jimmy Fallon does or David Letterman or, or any of the uh, popular TV pundits, you're going to run out of material at some point. Or if you don't take some time off, you're going to burn out. I know from personal experience of having published for several years on end that ultimately I had a point where I stopped being passionate about what I was publishing and I needed to step away for a while and do something different. And I think that that is bound to happen to anybody who tries to do the same thing day in, day out without a break. So instead of trying to stay relevant, find a way to create some kind of lasting value for the people who follow you so that while you take a break and refresh and regroup so that you can continue to be great for them, they will want you to come back.